Place, Earth. Year, 1998. Status, DEFCON 1. Diplomatic solutions to the world's problems fail, and war erupts as some madmen press ahead with their insane dreams. Current condition? High concentrations of radiation produce random storms and mutations. Somehow, life continues in the wasteland. Welcome to Wasteland. This is a post-apocalyptic role-playing game developed by Interplay and released by Electronic Arts all the way back in 1988. <laughs> I think at the time it was released on five and a quarter floppy disk. Some of you may not even know what a floppy disk is. Of course, uh, I remember them. If I recall, you could barely fit one megabyte of data on one disk. Just to give you an idea how small of a footprint this game really has. Anyway, this is the DOS version of the game. I think it's categorized as Abandonware, which is how I was able to obtain the copy I have now. Interplay has claimed that this is the spiritual predecessor to Fallout, which is why I was interested in the game to begin with. The reason I'm doing this as an impromptu Let's Play is simply to showcase the setting and the characters for anyone who might be a fan of the Fallout series already, but uh, might be interested in its origins. That being said, probably going to experiment a little bit with the production Maybe adding some ambient music tracks, since the game comes with no sound. Had to fit on that five and a quarter floppy, remember? So what is Wasteland about? 1998, World War III, civilization all but destroyed. A group of U.S. Army engineers takes command of a federal prison, and over the course of generations transforms that prison into a virtual fortress in the desert called Ranger Center home to a paramilitary organization called the Desert Rangers. Where is Ranger Center? In the southern end of the former state of Arizona, along the border with California. What else is around? The desert. That means dehydration, heat, and radioactive fallout. But it also means things like biker gangs, survivalists, religious zealots, and mutant animals. Sound familiar? This adventure is actually supposed to take us from Ranger Center in the south all the way north to the Grand Canyon. Along the way, you might see settlements like Quartz or Needles. We may also see Las Vegas, which is interesting since they <laughs> recently released Fallout New Vegas. Maybe this will be Fallout Old Vegas. And of course, we may even see the Grand Canyon itself. So how does Lily fit in with the Desert Rangers and Ranger Center? Lily is a Desert Ranger. In fact, <laughs> she leads a squad of Desert Rangers. Here is Ranger Center, the prison transformed into a fort, and Lily's squad, Lily's girls. Technically, she doesn't outrank any of them, they're all privates, but as part of her officer's training, she's been given this leadership role. Lily's the most intelligent and charming of the group, of course. Characters in Wasteland have seven primary attributes. Strength, ST, Intelligence, IQ, Lock, LK, Speed, SP, Agility, AGL, Dexterity, DEX, and Charisma, CHR. These scores can range anywhere from 1 to 18 and are assigned randomly. If you're creating a character and don't like their stats, <laughs> just keep rolling. Every point given to IQ can be used to buy skill points. Any remaining skill points left over are represented here as SKP. <laughs> Lastly, MaxCon simply represents a character's maximum constitution, of which they have a current constitution, Con commonly known as hit points. If a character's con reaches zero, they've fallen unconscious and could die. Lily's been issued a Cult 45 utilizing H-shot clips and has been told she'll have no trouble slowing down desert raiders or the occasional mutant cactus with it. I guess we'll find out. Otherwise, as with all other desert rangers, she's been issued the standard equipment, a coil of rope, water canteen, crowbar, combat knife, set of strike anywhere matches, and yeah, even a hand mirror. It's got to look good, right? Lily's past basic training, which included the use of basic clip pistol firearms like the Colt 45, swimming, and observation. She's also been trained in the use of a rifle. She's quite adept at conversation and can gain a stranger's trust quite quickly, and if not, maybe impress him with a bar trick or two. Of course, she's comfortable with the bureaucracy to which she aspires. Her specialized training includes demolitions, forgery detection, code breaking, metalworking, and some basic knowledge of first aid. Then there's Varla, the Mongolian, her straight black hair in a bob cut and her large eyes hidden behind thick cracked hand-me-down glasses which she's constantly adjusting. Nicknamed Pink by some of the girls, she has incredibly deft and nimble fingers. 
She can unjam an M16 with one hand while primping her bangs with the other. Varla's been issued a VP91Z, a descendant of the VP70, a 9mm fully automatic pistol utilizing 18 shot clips, ideal for those <laughs> extended firefights. She's also been issued the standard equipment of the Desert Ranger. Besides basic training, Varla prefers assault rifles. When you're as blind as she is, fully automatic fire is a must. Her specialized training includes picking locks, moving silently, disarming both alarms and bombs, and with some help from Lily, some knowledge of first aid. It's rumored that Pink can crack safes, too, but she probably didn't learn that at Ranger Center. Then there's the twin sisters Billy and Rosie, true-blooded, U.S.-born tomboys. You can tumble apart because Billy's the one with the shaved head who's probably sticking her tongue out. She's also the stronger of the two. She likes to emphasize that fact by making Horny the Lizard, that's a pet she had growing up, loved it so much she had it tattooed on her arm, whack his tail by flexing her bicep. Her standard firearm, a Colt 45. Besides basic training, Billy specialized in handling the big stuff, like anti-tank weaponry and submachine guns. Otherwise, she probably spends too much time in the mess hall playing poker and getting into fights, teaching people not to make fun of Horny. Pugilism. I think that's just a fancy word for fist fighting. How does that differ from brawling? The brawling skill covers fighting with such fun things as clubs, crowbars, chainsaws, and the like. Yeah, Billy's a fun date. Rosie. Unlike her sister, hasn't shaved her head. A fiery red buzz cut come flat top. True to her name, Rosie has flushed cheeks full of freckles. Of the sisters, she's the more agile one. Her standard firearm? Same as her sister, a Colt 45. She loves that thing. And when she's not playing with that, she's playing with knives, which explains her well manicured nails. But don't be fooled, she could pin a scorpion from 50 feet. Otherwise, Rosie spends most of her time looking for even more freckles, exercising out in the yard, at least when she's not busy backing her sister up in the mess hall. Okay, so where does our story begin? Let's look at the world map. Obviously, things are not to scale. This figure represents Lily's squad, and we're right on top of Ranger Center in the midst of some mountains. Beyond the immediate surroundings, you can see the radioactive desert spanning for miles, with an unknown settlement here to the northwest. There's a clock in the upper right-hand corner and a radioactivity meter to the right. Headquarters has given Lily and her Rangers their first orders. Investigate a number of disturbances in the desert. Be sure to include High Pool, the Agricultural Center, and the Desert Nomads Camp in your final report. Real specific, right? Of course, Lily doesn't want to leave. Work makes Lily's life <laughs> difficult. In fact, she dreams about being promoted to Major General, given an office all her own, not to have to do this grunt work out in the desert anymore. She compulsively radios in to headquarters just to make sure the radio is working, <laughs> hoping someone decided to promote her since the last time she radioed in. Only an hour ago. The last thing Lily wants to do is to have to deal with those ugly and disgusting people who live outside of Ranger Center. Billy takes point, spanning her crowbar across the back of her neck with both hands. Her twin sister Rosie is close behind, busy loading her Colt 45. Rosie's eyebrows raise as she hears Lily tell Varla to watch the rear. She can hear Vivi, that's what Rosie calls Varla. Dropping 9mm ammo while trying to load her firearm. <laughs> At least she remembered, unlike Lily. Lily and the girls look out across the seemingly endless desert towards the horizon, squinting in the midday sun. None of them have ever set foot in the wasteland before.